Last time I went out for salmon, I went out 20 miles. Today we're going about eight to nine. And when you're on a boat and you're trying to find the location, usually we go by coordinates. So this is how it looks when you're searching for coordinates to go to on your GPS. So I've got a Garmin fish finder and this is how I would do it. I would go to the map, then I would do menu and then waypoints and tracks. And then we're going to a waypoint, a new waypoint. And we're gonna enter coordinates. Now we're in Half Moon Bay, so we're at 37, 122. And that's a general square on the map. The more numbers you input, the more precise your location will be. So we're at 29, 28. Usually those first th two numbers here and three numbers here stay the same, 29, 28. That's what you're gonna hear when you're on the VHF and they say fish are at 29, 25 or 31, 41 or whatever. Then you could get the general idea of where the fish are at. So right now I'm just gonna input the general area where we're going and then once we get there, we're gonna look for signs of life and then we can dial in our exact location if we wanna share it with anyone. So I remember when first getting this boat and trying to go out, I always thought I had to go balls to the wall as fast as I could but you really just got to go to the speed of the conditions. Right now, we're cruising at 20. It doesn't seem like it, but that's really all the boat can handle right now. And normal speed, if it's really swelly, you know, 16, 18 miles per hour, nothing crazy fast. Just take your time with it and yeah, make the ride a little bit more comfortable. Really swelly, huh? <laughs> a little swelly. Uh-oh. Pretty much got to the spot now. Got my bait here. I'm gonna let it thaw off in the water. Just gonna dip it a couple times. So if you're in from the Bay Area, you know how windy it's been. 40 mile an hour winds every day, even in the city. And with all that wind, I was at the beach the other day. It looks like all the bait was coming close. Right now, we're in 150 feet of water and the water temperature is 48 degrees, pretty cold. So I'm gonna rig up the couple cable baiters, we're gonna put them on the downriggers, and hopefully the fish moved in and we don't have to go all the way out to deep reef. Well, we see some signs of life. I'm gonna do this the same way, put this clip right on the downrigger. All right, 45. Daniel's gonna go down to what? 65, 45 and 65. All right, Daniel, you get the first fish. You haven't got one this year? A fish on, fish on, no? Jelly, my, my, oh, that's probably jelly. There's a lot of jellies around here. Man, all right, it might be difficult to fish. Oh man, jelly, jelly. Oh my God, look at those birds right in front of us, bro. Oh goodness, oh dude, look at that. Yeah, we're in the spot, man, we're in the spot, but there's a lot of jellies, we gotta fight through them. When there's a lot of jellyfish, a lot of people use those um, two pound balls or three pound balls, and those will cut right through the jellyfish usually. Well, one of the downriggers stopped working, so we gotta change it up a little bit. We're gonna stack these rods. I got this one at 40 feet, and then I'm gonna put another clip on, but it's just these jellyfish, it's just a problem right now. Mine is at 80, Daniel's is at 40. Somebody just called me and told me some new numbers. What was it? I think it was 20, what was it? It was 2038, that's where we're at right now. So about 10 miles out of Half Moon Bay, we just put our rods in, stacking them again. This one's at 75 feet and, well, mine is at 75 feet, Daniel's is at 35 feet. Yeah, that might be. And the other one might be Sean in the park, if, if that's a parker, I don't know. Sean. It's on, yeah, it's a good one. Huh? It's a good one. We on, Daniel's got a good one. We put a spoon on this jig too, on this rod. We changed it from the cable baiter to a spoon. 
All right, I'm gonna clear, get this downrigger up so if the fish takes a run up to the boat, he's not gonna get stuck in it. So get the, get the weight up here, okay. All right, go step back a little. Running. All right, that's cool. Oh, it's right there, it's right there. That's a decent one, huh? Okay, watch out with this. Right here. Turn to the right. I don't have much room. I don't have much room to move here. Good one, dude. Nice throw. Wait, that's a good one. That's a good one. That was on the spoon too. I switched it up. Let's go, man. Cool. That's a nice. That's a nice one. Eight pounder, maybe. So just switch to the spoon. No more cable baiter. They want the the fake stuff, I guess, today. So this is what I switched it to. One of these uh, Coyote four inch uh, by Lure Jensen. Just switched it up. Hey, sometimes they don't want the bait. So another person on the radio just said that they got them on the watermelon apex. So that's what we switched it to within a couple minutes. So we're going to switch both rods to a spoon now. Uh, just boxed one at 105 feet on the wire. Over. Mm, hello, deep. Ah, uh, very nice to know. Uh, what it had? Uh, crippled anchovy, green head. Alright, yeah, we, we had them down deep for a minute and I brought it back up to 50. Maybe I'll send it back down over. I think I think they're deeper now, uh, given the time of day. Um, so we've got, you know, a couple on the different uh, levels and that one finally hit over. All right on, buddy. Good job. Yeah, you know, we kind of poked away from the fleet. We were like dodging boats and I was just like, Marcus, let's get out of here. So we're, we poked north a ways and uh, we're seeing good flies. Oh, that one is at uh, 55 again. Yeah. Feels good. Feels like yours. Feels good. Another 10 pounder will take that. Yeah, I think it is. Taking some line. Woo! That's a good one. That's a good one. On the spoon again, on that coyote spoon. Switch to the watermelon after this. Yeah. Oh baby, how's it feel? Take a drag again. Take a drag again, it's a good one. Almost that leader. That's a good one. I saw a flash. I saw a flash. Ooh, he's got he's fighting hard man. He's good. He's good yeah, it's a good fish. Taking a little line again. It's a good fish, man. It's a good fish. This might be bigger than yours. Yeah, probably. Well founder maybe? Maybe. All right. Even a little bigger, huh? It's coming in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a good one. He's a good one. Good one? Mm -hmm. down, see him? I see him. I see color. See color, baby. Yep. This is a good one. Take line again. Oh, oh, oh. dude, he's fighting. Look at it. Take it off. Take it off. Oh, bro. No, 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 no. <laughs> you good? Here he comes. Wait, yeah. okay. Alright, ready? Here he comes. Here he comes. Get him in there. Nice, bro. Yoo! Let's go. So. So, that's a good one. That was scary. That was scary. Nice looking fish. Hell yeah, dude. All right, cool, man. Hell yeah. It's hot. That's a nice uh, one. Yeah, that is a nice one. That's a nice one. Yeah, that's about the same as the last one. Maybe a little smaller, actually. So. Okay. Real well. Yep, he wasn't going off. Real well. Ah, fish number two. It's a nice one. This one's about 10 pounds, about the same as the last one. Right there, that's the spoon for the day. Two fish on it so far. Nice, hell yeah. We might not have enough time to do the original plan, but we might. It's 12 o'clock right now. If we can get two more fish in two hours, I mean, we could fish until sunset. So, we're trolling again. Yeah. Yeah. We're going over our spot again. Oh, I
that coyote spoon hitting right now. Uh, while it's a little bit slow, we're gonna bleed these fish, get some ice on them. All right, let's see what it looks like. Try not to go too deep. Ooh, the meat is nice, dude. Nice and red on this one. The other one I had was really pale. So this one's nice. So we're gonna get the gills out here first. Go right under the gills. Cut along the area there. Just taking the gills out makes it a little bit more clean. Well, I can already tell there's nothing in his stomach, so not even worth it to check. But see, here's the gallbladder. Try not to puncture that if possible. There you go, look at that meat, man. That's a nice fish. Let's see. A little bit more pale on this one, interesting. Well, nothing in this one's stomach either, but this one was a female. Interesting though that the meat on this one is not nearly as red as the other one, but just gonna clear it out a little bit. All right. Yeah, nice looking fish. Into the ice you go. Some ice in the belly cavity, that always helps to keep it nice and cool. Well, it's about 1.30. Don't want to waste any more time. So, we're going to make the most of our time and go see if we can get some more fish. Some different species now. All right, y'all. It's time for rockfish. We're fishing 103 feet. There's a little shelf right here, and we're going to drift along it, see what we can get. Now, this dumb rule, maybe someone can explain it to me where I'll think of it as not a dumb rule, but we have salmon on board. When you go for salmon, you need to fish barbless hook for them. But now we have one on board, now we have to fish barbless hook for rockfish and anything else that we target. So we're going for rockfish, but we gotta pinch down the barbs. And later when we go for halibut, we gotta pinch down the barbs. And technically, if we use a sabiki, we gotta pinch down the barbs. How dumb is that? time to pinch down the barbs. Just restocked on these two. These are the Fisherman's Life Day One jigs. These were the first jigs that I made, so that's why they're the Day Ones. And this is a new color too, glow. It's got a little bit of glow on it. 150 gram, about six ounces, 110 feet of water right now. Let's see what happens, man. Well, so how I'm finding these spots, I've got Navionics out and I got it zoomed in and it's on tracking mode. So I can see what direction I'm drifting and it looks like I'm drifting perfectly in line right now. So yeah, dropping down, we're in hundred feet of water. Daniel's using herring for bait. He's trying to get some big lings and I'm just trying to see whatever bites this jig. Daniel on the ling with the herring. Yeah, I think so. Looks like it. Oh, bro. Want me to hold the rod? <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, that's like 30. Nice. Ooh. Nice. I knew there were fish around here. This is a link cod. Right there. Nice link cod. All right, y'all. This is the last drift. Let's see if we can make it work. We're going to switch it up for rockfish. Switch out the jig to an old school swim bait. This is a 6.8 inch Kitek with a three ounce jig head, which is pretty light for this drift. It's pretty fast, but we're gonna try to make it work. Finally got something. A steel. Hella small. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it or no? I'm not gonna keep it, are you? You bleed them? Yeah. Well, we tried. Daniel got a nice link hot on the herring. And I didn't get any halibut. 
no rockfish for me crazy man it's been super slow but we got about an hour and a half boat ride home and i gotta clean the boat so I'm just gonna cut our losses take what we got two really nice king salmon some you know sometimes it just doesn't go as you plan so it's all good but thanks for watching anyway i'll see you guys next time peace